welcome to the workshop. Set your marking gauge to the thickness of your one component. And mark it around the end of the joint on your other component. On your pin board you only need to mark the face side and opposite the face side. On the tail board you'll need to mark all the way around. My components are different thicknesses so I'll reset my gauge and mark around my other component. To mark for the tails, I want two tails and a gap in the middle. To find the middle, I'm just going to use a pair of dividers and gauge it. That's roughly the middle. So to be able to chop this waste out, I need to have at least this much of a gap at the bottom. If I take my marking gauge and we're going to do a 1 in 7 slope I think for this one. I think you can see mark up with line up with my mark here and that would be like so. Dip it over Mark the other one. That leaves us some waste which we can chop out with this chisel quite easily. Then at the ends we want to make sure that we don't have too small a pin on the pin board. So we need to leave a reasonable amount of space there as well. I'm going to go for probably the same as I've got the gap in between the two tails. So if I lay that up there, put a mark, and at the other end, another mark. And then I can complete the marking up of my tails on this side of the board. Now I can square these lines across the end of the component I've set my workpiece in the front vise now, it's up nice and perpendicular and I can now saw down the dovetail marks that we've made. Don't go past the gauge line that we marked around here earlier, but go as close as you can. And once you've set your angle for sawing, don't change the angle during the cut, just keep going. It doesn't matter if you're not entirely on the line as you go down there, as long as you're consistent. <laughs> With 
done, we can cut the end waste off from the tails. Set that up nice and parallel with the vise again. Start the cut just by letting in a little step against your gauge mark. And cut down to your previous saw mark. Flip over, same on the other side. You can now use a jeweler's saw to cut out the majority of the waste between our two tails. With a chisel, just less than the width of your piece of work, pare down the very last bit of that cut you made by putting your chisel into the knife line and pushing in. Taking a chisel just a little bit less than the gap at the base and outside of the tails. Find the knife line and push in. That will get you a very crisp joint. Depending on how well you cut with your jeweler's saw in the middle, you may be able to just pair away the waste at the bottom of the hole now, or you may need to lay it flat on the bench and chop. Clamp the work firmly above a leg of your bench, and then place your chisel a little bit inside the knife line. and chop roughly halfway. Then extend out to your saw cuts just by pairing now put your chisel into the knife line making sure it's nice and plumb and chop Again, roughly halfway, and then pare away the edges. Flip the work over and repeat the process from the other side. With the work clamped back in your vise, use a chisel to clean the gap so it's nice and flat between the knife lines on both sides. And use a skew chisel if you need to get right into the corner. If 
you don't have a skew chisel, you can get into the corner with a small narrow sharp knife and your tails are nicely cut. To mark out the pins, I put my pin board into the front vise and I'm using a spacer here to space it off the top of the bench I can move the spacer back now and use it to rest the end of my tailboard on and I can bring my tailboard up place it on top of the pin board line up the sides remembering that these two components are exactly the same width so they should line up well line up the gauge mark that we've cut to on the pins with the pin board and if you shine a bright light underneath here you'll just be able to see wisps of light coming through that corner now I'm putting plenty of pressure down on my tailboard here so it doesn't move. I'm going to use a scalpel to mark for the pins. And the idea here is to rest the bevel of the blade against the tail and just carefully mark a line. If you have trouble seeing the knife line that you're making, before you start marking up, you can use a piece of chalk and wipe it across the end grain and you'll find that the marks you make will stand out quite a bit better. And before I go any further, I'm going to mark the waste area. so I don't cut the wrong bits off. And now I'll just graze that up in the vise and use my square to transfer those lines down to the gauge mark. And marking down the back side that's the dovetail line there. Move the square across, mark it down to the gauge line. I think you can see that the way I'm doing it here means that even if you haven't cut precisely to the angle that you originally marked what we're cutting now is what you have cut what the, the lines we're transferring are for what you have cut rather than what you were aiming to cut we don't want to be using the dovetail marker to set these lines just in case we didn't saw exactly to that in the first place and these knife lines we'll use with our chisel when we clean out these slots. And now I'm just marking on the waist side of our lines as a reference for when we saw. And I'm going to mark a base line to cut to. So I'll feel our gauge line with the knife, move the square up, 
that's our piece of waste and that's our piece of waste and now we need to saw straight down just stay on the waste side of our marked lines Careful not to go too far. Let the saw do all the work. We're just moving it back and forwards. The weight of the back is carrying it through the cut. And now we can use the jeweler's saw to cut out the majority of the waste. Always remembering that we want to cut more on the flared side of the dovetail than the other side. Now with the work clamped down to the bench again, we can start to remove the waste back to our knife line. I'm starting with a, a chisel that is just narrower than the, the width of the, the dovetail end. I can't go too far with that, otherwise it will cut into the walls of the dovetail, the walls of the pins. But I can relieve a little bit of material so that I can then feed it into the knife line. And make a nice clean cut. And then I can take a, a narrower chisel and work down to roughly halfway. And I can also work the angle of the dovetail now that I have the narrower chisel. And then you can just pare down to the knife lines that you marked at the ends of your pins. Using the surface that you've already just chopped as a reference to keep the chisel nice and flat. And we can flip it over and work from the, the narrow side. So obviously starting now with a, a chisel that will fit in this side. Get rid of some of the initial waste. And 
and then chisel into the knife line and then pair to the, the lines of the dovetail Now with our pinball back in the vise we can then just clean up the surfaces with a few paring cuts just clean up where we chopped if we haven't quite reached the knife lines on the pins then we can just carefully pair those away as well and I didn't quite hit my knife line when I sawed so I'm just taking a little bit of material off here always remembering to go across the grain with the chisel not down if you try to go down like this you might say oh I can see my line that's the easy way to do it it looks an easy way to do it but the likelihood is you'll split the wood so chisel across the grain Just clean up your pins. Some people like to fit their dovetails straight off the saw, but my experience with adhesives is they prefer to have a nicely, nice flat surface to work on, and so I think a something that's been finished nicely with a chisel will probably take the glue better than just straight from the saw So that side's good. Just quickly tidy up this side. This is the side I, I was sawing from and I've pretty much hit my mark down this way. Very little if any material to remove. And there we go. So that's not looking too bad. We'll, uh, we'll glue that up and clean it off with a hand plane. Wipe off the glue and before we leave it just check that we've got a good right angle and we're almost almost there 
that's good and we'll leave that to set and we'll come back and clean it off with a plane I'm reasonably happy with this joint. All the intersections are lovely and tight. It's at 90 degrees. It's very strong. All the faces are lovely and flush. The dovetail joint. Give it a go.